Hello, everybody, and welcome to MTG Study Hall. I am Brett, and I am joined, as always, by JC and Lily. Uh, we're just going to get this, uh, throw this out now. Um, this is going to be the last show for a while. We'll be going on hiatus, and we don't know when we're going to be back, and we don't know with what uh, uh, host um, setup it's going to be. So this is going to be goodbye for now. So we're going to be taking a little extra time on this one. We've got um, a lot we want to talk about for our last show for now. I've got to take care of a little bit of bookkeeping, so I'm going to do that right now. Um, support this show and the other shows on our channel, even while we're on hiatus, uh, by liking, subbing, enrolling, uh, at any of the following places, Facebook, YouTube, Patreon, Twitch, we are at all of them, slash TCG University, we are available on iTunes, SoundCloud, Spotify, five-star ratings on this show, and the other shows on the channel are very helpful, and the ch you can help the channel grow by sharing it with friends, um, that one is a big one, that's how we keep the channel going, um, we got Patreon Junior, or higher sponsors to thank, we've got Addy, Andrew Dang, Anthony Albano, Bryce, Bryce Ratsack, Clay Cardwell, Jacob Arson Masur, Jay Rogers, Jay... Uh, Jesse Seravin, Jesse Morrison, Jesse Nix, Justin Farts, Kat Maria, Kevin Broberg, Kieran Vision, Kyle K, Lucinda Letica, Orlando, Va uh, Orlando Valdez Santos, Paul Casagrande, Ransom McArthur, Samantha Stevens, The Baddest Bitch Around, Sean O'Brien, Timothy M. Freelieb, Tamers Evolutions, TCG, Tyler Zane Pease, and our uh, quick shout out to our sponsors, Nuclear Ink, Custom Tattoo and Skate Shop, Red Riot Games, Cards, Custom Build, Inked Gaming, and Dex Protection. There'll be more on those later during the commercial break. But for now, let's get on to magic. So, uh, really quick, uh, we're going to talk about what we've done in Magic these past couple weeks since the last show. Uh, Lily, what have you been up to these past couple weeks in Magic? Uh, I've been watching a lot of uh, streamers. Okay. Mostly um, the Amazonian. She's pretty cool. And what, uh, uh, Rina Moto, what have uh, you been playing? She's okay. uh, the streamer Rina, yeah. Okay. All righty. JC, what have you been up to? Oh, not too, too much. Uh, Trying to keep up with some Modern Horizons spoilers, uh, thinking a lot about counters and ways to make white better. <laughs> That's been kind of like uh, occupying my brain space as of recently in the Magic Universe. So, Oh, also I picked up uh, issue two of the Magic comic by Boom Studios today. So, um, Still yeah. still really good. Recommend picking it up. Okay. All righty. As for me, not that much. Uh, keeping up with spoilers, uh, reading stuff on Reddit. I played a little bit of Arena while we were waiting for the show to get going. It's It's been a while. So uh, looking forward to my full commander group um, to be all vaccinated ready to play, which will be happening very soon. So very look, very much looking forward to that. So this episode, um, first off, there's we've got the full set of Modern Horizons 2. We're going to talk about that because there's a lot to talk about there. And then we're just going to kind of reminisce and talk about the show and talk about magic and just kind of take it easy on our last episode, uh, at least for now. At last episode, asterisk for now, but the future's uncertain, so who who knows when that is. So again, we're just, whenever I say last episode, that's what I mean. Last episode, asterisk. So, okay. Damn, this set is awesome. I'm really, really cool. impressed with this set. I'm like, really impressed with the number of like mechanics in this set. Like, oh yeah. No, it's a little bit crazy. I've got I've got the full mythic spoiler pulled up on the left like, here. Like never have I seen so many mechanics where I went, what is that? And this is is this the heaviest is this the most mechanics in ever any set ever? Does that break the, it has the break to be? Uh, Gosh, if it's not, it's right? like I think original Time Sparrow might have it. Is it the, the set Time Sparrow? No, 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 no. Future Sight. Future Sight. Yeah. If, if any Future set has, if any set has more mechanics than this set, it's Future Sight. We're talking keywords, right? Uh, yeah, keywords. Yeah. Well, keywords, yeah. Keywords. Ability words. Oh. Yeah. 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 So I'm like, oh man. Oh, I, I was wrong. i I think I have to eat a hat. Uh, because we didn't get a Mishra. I just realized oh, that right now. That's right, we did not. I was much quite to sure. much to my insane disappointment, actually. We've got to be getting a Mishra soon, though. Like, I mean, well, I guess soon, but we aren't getting a core set. That we aren't getting a core set this year, and we've already done commander decks, and the commander decks are now tied to plane. So yeah, I don't know when we're getting a Mishra, I which mean, means that Ray gets to keep playing their bullshit, stupid Mishra deck. That but is you're not just mad. Because they're playing probably the worst commander they could be playing for that color combo. And it works some of the time. Yeah, that's great. That's all you need. Ah, oh, it's infuriating. But I want to just rave about a few cards and a few cycles. Also, 
because they already announced it, I completely forgot. The Fetchies are in this set at Rare. I just as a reminder of all of this, the Fetch lands are in this set at Rare. I mean, the packs are too expensive, in my in my opinion, but yeah, that's a little bit crazy. Gosh, the MSRP on these is way higher. It's like, what is it? I think it's seven bucks a pack or something. So like, still higher than I'm really happy with, but it could be worse. Um, so I do want to oh, go ahead. So yeah, what what um like when looking over this set, what are like the uh, the few things that just scream to you about it? So the evoke cycle of mythics, the elemental incarnation cycle, I am so blown away by. It seems wildly playable. It's going to change the I I I don't that okay. I'm going to throw this out there now. I don't play a ton of I don't play any modern, and I'm not super caught up on the modern meta game. I am tangentially aware of it as it moves and like when it's bad i know about it because it'll be posted about regularly but like these seem like really modern i mean they're free cards and all the effects seem pretty great so like this is solitude subtlety grief fury and endurance but like the white the blue and the black one are all crazy um these are all creatures with evoke evoke being an alternate cost where when you pay the evoke cost you uh, cast the creature spell um, by paying the evoke cost, which is generally cheaper, and then you have to sack the creature after you pay the evoke cost. But the evoke cost in all of these cases is by uh, exiling a appropriately colored card from your hand. So for the black one, you have to exile a black card from your hand, but then you get to get the spell effect. So yeah, I mean, really quick here. The white one costs five, and it's a three-two, but the evoke cost, again, exile a card from your hand. It has flash and lifelink, and when it enters the battlefield, battlefield, exile up to one other target creature, that creature's control gains life equal to its power. So it's swords to plowshares. So mm -hmm. swords to plowshares, you do have to, you, so you're, I mean, you're down a card if you do that to your opponent's, yeah, if you do it to your opponent's creature. Um, so for some context, nowadays, I would suspect swords to plowshares to probably cost like, it would cost like three or four mana. And it wouldn't be played because it would cost too much for modern. So like, yeah, I mean, yeah. And like most limited environments in exile, any creature spell in white without a downside is like yeah. five. So like, like they yeah. wouldn't print it in white. But if they were to print it, it would be like three or four million. Yeah. But like, also, this is a three, two with flash and lifelink. And like, if you do any flicker shenanigans, and like, we also have a big player in modern is ephemerate, which is that one white instant exile a, a creature return to the battlefield at the, is it right away or at the end of the turn? Uh, I, mean, I think it's right, right away. And then you get, then it has rebounds. So you get to do it again. So like, any of these creatures, well, except really the green one with, with that card, is just nuts. Uh, the blue one, the blue one, so the blue one's a 3-3 three, three for 4 with flash and flying, same evoke cost, uh, but blue. When it enters the battlefield, you choose up to one target creature spell or planeswalker spell, and the owner, its owner puts it on the top or bottom of the library. Like, that's crazy strong, and like, as a 4-mana 3-3 three, three flyer, like, you can just play that on turn yeah. 4, for a ridiculous tempo swing, so like, on your opponent's turn four, like, yeah, you don't have to commit to it if it's not the best counter spell for the moment. You use one of the other cards in your hand. You can use your cryptic or your actual counter spell. Like the tempo on subtlety is absurd, and a three three for four with flying and flash, like that's not great in modern, but stapled to a better remand. Well, you don't draw, but like a very much a delaying yeah, card. The, so like, the drawing on remand is huge. Yeah. But you can play this alongside Remand. So like it's yeah. like there's gotta be some crazy tempo deck. Like I feel like we are hitting if there isn't already, we've gotta be hitting that point. Also, oh, didn't did Brainstorm get put into modern here? No. No, no. okay. Brainstone did. That's that two man oh. artifact. Excuse no. me. Yeah, way worse. Brainstorm would be too much. Brainst Brainstorm is too much for legacy. Is it? Yes. It's just it's one of the I mean it's too much for legacy, like probably like it, it's it's I mean too much is a complicated. It's format warping. The format is very much warped around brainstorm and legacy. It's just like okay. the format is modern is warped around lightning bolt and thought seas. Right. So like the fetch is in modern, so Yeah, no, I mean we're all people it's are already ancestral. Yeah. People are already at the point where they're saying modern horizons two is making modern's now just legacy light and like if you really want know. to be yeah, and yeah, I don't think mo brainstorm is not a balanced card in a fetchland world. Uh, really quick, the rest of the cards: grief. We talked about last time. Uh, you get to 
take a uh, non-land card out of their hand and they discard it. It's a 3-2 with Menace. The red one's a 5-mana 3-3 three, three double striker. When it enters the battlefield, you do 4 damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures or walkers. Wait, that's really fucking good, right? That's um, like a blowout against certain decks. Like, I mean, elves and soul sisters just get eaten alive by that. Um, yeah, you just... Like, sometimes that's just a 4-for-1 for, for no mana. And like, again, I'm sorry, I don't, four for two. And like, I don't know Modern well enough to know, like... The ephemerate tricks just seem so cute with this, but, like, this with an ephemerate is 8 to 12 damage spread out across the whole board, and then it's also a 3-3 double striker, so if you evoke it in and then ephemerate it, you just get to keep it. I mean, it dies to bolt, but... It, I mean, yeah. I don't think this is as main deckable as the other three, but I feel like this goes in some sideboards, and you just get to just blow out those creature-based decks. I mean, it doesn't die to bolt if you hold up an ephemerate. <laughs> That's true. And then Endurance, the green one, Reach, Flash, 3-4 for 3. And then when it enters the battlefield, uh, target player shuffles their graveyard. Oh, that's, 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 puts their graveyard shuffled on the bottom of their library in a random order. Um, so, I, like, for Commander, I'm glad the green one's unremarkable. Yeah. No, like, and people were, like, green gets has plenty of awesome things in this set. This isn't a bad card. This is the one you're probably, it's the cheapest. Uh, it's a 3-4 three, for 3. It blocks the crap out of all of the good flying creatures that people are running, is my understanding, and it just shuts down certain decks, and the uh, sus not suspend, the uh, Cascade decks just got a lot better, because we got Shardless Agent. So, like, the decks that are just, like, li Living End, and all of those decks, and Dredge, or anything, like, this is a fine sideboard card. You're It's a free disruption to their graveyard at instant speed. Yeah, it doesn't need to be the best. But yeah, sorry, sorry. They, they, these five, like, they're at the top of the mythic spoiler. They're the ones I've been thinking about the most. So, sorry, like I just talked three, a lot. Four, but. Like, a 3-4 reach for three is, like, respectable. Yeah. Like, that's, like, good in a lot of formats. And then, like, Flash, and then the Evoke. Like, these, a lot of these creatures are, like, I don't know if it's, like, modern, respectable. This is a modern set. Let's not forget that this set is for modern. Mm -hmm. um, but like if we, they, they, they're all pretty good. Um, I do like if we're talking about green evoke creatures. I think Foundation Breaker is pretty cool. That's the two two for four with the evoke for one green and one that um, destroys an artifact or enchantment. Oh, yeah. I like that. That's like a nice. It's a nice middle of the road uh, with like because Rex Sage exists, but Rex Sage costs three. So right. being able to and it's it wait, wait, what's a three two right. It's a two-two. Two-two. What card okay. is that again? A foundation breaker. It's a uncommon or a common? It's an uncommon. Yeah. Okay. Like, just I don't know. Like being able to evoke it for two is good. I mean, it's really good. Sometimes it's just a sorcery speed naturalized. But sometimes it's a two-two for four yeah. that does it on a body. You know, I I like that one. Like. I don't know if it's going to see a ton of main deck play in modern, but like it's sweet for limited. I think it's a nice commander alternative. Um, it's like Ingot Chewer and and uh, what's the other one? Um, was there? Anyway, there was oh, like right. a red. There's a red evoke creature that uh, Ingot Chewer, yeah. which destroys an artifact, and then there's a white one that mirrors it that destroys an enchantment, and then you know, I like it when they do that shit. I mean, this set is basically all of that. Um, yeah. I want to uh, igno ignoble hierarch. The mad That's lads did it. It's literally Whatever. it's it's literally Jund, uh, um, noble hierarch. Mm -hmm. Which for people who don't it's know, it's a goblin. It is a goblin. Noble hierarch is a zero one for one green with exalted, and it taps for blue, uh, green, or white. This is a zero one for one green with exalted that taps for black, red, or green. Um, green gets to tap for whatever color it wants. Green tapping for any of these for one. Like, no one is this inappropriate, but right. noble. And then they um, since noble hierarch was printed, like in the time intervening time, we also had exalted in black. So it's it makes yeah. Sense. No, it's it's this is in no way inappropriate. Um, noble hierarch is probably the best dork in modern. So this is now you can run eight of the best dork in modern. With a slight difference, so that's right. got to be a thing. Modern, in fact, got something to offset uh, the Phyrexian creature type update, which is awful for it. Why is that? Uh, Plague Engineer. 
Oh, yeah. He kills, like, all your creatures. Yeah, that's true. Um, JC, what are some of the cards you want to talk about? I realize I'm just going to keep rambling if I don't stop. Oh, no worries. Um, no worries at all. So, a couple things that really stand out to me in this set is, uh, is I think a squirrel commander deck is in my future because uh, there's a lot of like cool squirrel cards in this. Uh, let's see. I mean, the, the, you've got a legendary green black squirrel commander now. Yeah. Sure do, uh, Chatterfang. Uh, so let me throw him up here real quick. Oh, Chatterfang's phenomenal. I'm so happy about this card. Yeah, so Chatterfang, Squirrel General, uh, he's two in green, uh, legendary creature squirrel warrior with, like, art. Um, <laughs> like, I'm really happy with it. Forest Walk. If one or more tokens would be created under your control, those tokens <laughs> plus that many... Oh, let's see. Plus that many 1-1 one, one squirrel creature tokens are created instead. Uh, sacrifice X squirrels target creature put gets XX until end of turn. Like uh, it just tosses, it tosses squirrels. Uh, uh, so, right. so. Uh, other than that, I like uh, how many uh, tokens are being put on things. I think that's really cool. Um, I like all the token support. Uh, I also really like evoke. Uh, like you were saying, I think evoke is a really cool alternate casting cost. Uh, so, so really happy in all those directions. Oh man. oh man! All right, what's your favorite card from the set, Brett? Oh god. Okay. Um, that's really hard. This is tricky. While you're thinking, uh, can I just? Uh, yeah, somebody else. No, I've got to decide that. I've got to pick one because I've got like three things fighting for it. Okay. Sorry. Uh. I think the cool so, oh, uh, so the art I used for today's uh, today's thumbnail is so shiny, um, and the artist it, for that card is uh, Drew Tucker. He's one of the like original Magic artists, and you see him on like old school classic cards. So you'll see him on things like Her Jackal and like Merc Dwellers and stuff like that. Um, so it's an interesting callback to like old Magic cards, and I like that they're using the art and stuff for it and uh he's actually like in like when people talk magic art sometimes like they kind of consider some people kind of consider him not a great artist because they don't like the style of cards like her jackal for instance which is a lot like his art style um but uh yeah just a just a weird art note uh he's like a he's one of the original artists so i like seeing uh, things like that come back in Modern Horizons 2, where you take something from the foundational base of magic and bring it into, like, modern. I think that's really cool, so. Okay. Um, the coolest card they did, it's not my favorite, but the coolest card they did, I would argue, is Gareth One-Eye, or Garth One-Eye, oh. or whatever. I think Garth. They, I think, like, I think they... They are cowards for not making the tokens. I agree with that. Um, I think they should make the damn tokens. But uh, Garth One Eye is a five five for Wooberg. And uh, just to be clear, I hate generally. I don't. I have no interest in five color commanders uh, or legendary creatures. They need I to think exist. It's fair to say that on the whole, you hate five color legendary creatures, especially in the last few years. I, fra I freaking yeah. love Garth. He's hobo wizard. No, I mean, so I just said, normally I don't like five-color stuff. Like, I, I know that it, it should exist. Uh, I know that people like it. And this isn't in standard, so I care about it less because it makes, because Commander's already got a bunch of really good ones. Right. But, so he's a five-five, and so his ability is tap, choose a card that hasn't been chosen from among Disenchant, um, Brain Geyser, Terror, Shivan Dragon, Regrowth, and Black Lotus. Create a copy of that, ca create a copy of that card with the chosen name. You may cast the copy. So, yeah. We let you play Black Lotus. And, and so there's one of each card of each color from Alpha and Black Lotus. Uh, the design document on this card is really interesting to read. Initially, they were going to put the text on it where, like, he did something with, like, like if the, like, you know, like, the what's the, what's, like, destroy all cards from the Mercadian Masks expansion? Like, whatever, City in a... Uh, you're, um, the, the, the Mercadian Masks expansion is the Silex? Yeah, that sounds right. So, like, they've in the past they did they did that. It's so, like originally this card was going to do something with like if the card was printed in alpha, do blank. Um, I think this is a very interesting. Like, this is pushing 
the rules like this demands a lot of knowledge. I don't think this card can exist in a world where you don't have readily available internet. Like I don't think they could have reasonably printed this card early in Magic. There's just so many. Well, I mean, there were like a hundred cards early in Magic. <laughs> okay, but like even then, like I don't even agree. Like, I don't think this if this card was printed in Alpha. I think that would have been a huge problem. Like it, it's it, it's interesting, right? With all that, so, like I think that's so cool. Um, sorry, I realize I'm not. I'm giving like four answers to your what's your favorite card. That's also, okay. Asmaran. Oh gosh, the the, the incredibly long name, Asmaran. Um, yeah. Whatever, asthma. The chef lady. A chef lady who has no mana cost because her name takes up the whole text box. You can play her if you've discarded a card this turn for one black red hybrid. She's a three three. When she enters the battlefield, you search your library for a card named the Underworld Cookbook, reveal it, and put it in your hand and shuffle. Then you can sacrifice two foods and target creature deals six damage to itself. It's like they got this old alpha flavor text card printed. It was clever. It works as a commander. It's madness without having to say madness. So, like, I'm mad impressed they pulled that off. Oh, also, like, I don't know. I can't, like, having played around in the same exact design space a little bit, I wish they would have just made the book legendary and made, like, hey, this can also be your commander and they have partner. Yeah. Oh, they, just fucking do it. Like, oh, my God. I'm still trying really hard to not say this can be your command, uh, yeah. reference commander on non-commander based cards, which they need to just drop because... Or they can tie it into partner. Yeah, I'm with... I, I am a firm believer that they just need to drop that rule, particularly, like, this is... There's there's over 45 mechanics in this set, and there's a card that references five other cards and gives no additional details. I think this set is directed towards the crew that can handle the word commander on it, and also... <laughs> And here's an argument against the stupid rule. So, like, okay, in a standard set, a new player might go, what's Commander? But, like, if a new player's just running into cards, there's a ton of cards that reference Commander now. So, like, if they find a stack of cards and they don't know what Commander is, they'll have to figure it out. So, like, the argument could be made for a core set or a standard release set. But a specialty set like this should just drop the damn rule if it would make designing a card easier. To yeah. answer your question... Favorite card of the set is absolutely Cauldra Complete. It is a seven mana legendary artifact equipment with living weapon. That means when it enters the battlefield, you put a zero zero Phyrexian germ, black Phyrexian germ creature token into play, equipped uh, to it. The equipment Which is, is keyword errata. Yes. Says living weapon, it used to just be a germ. Which I'm a little bit bummed about because I feel like you could come up with another reason to. Come put living weapon on a non Phyrexia plane, mm -hmm. but not anymore. So like, yeah. but it does give the keyword people are happier. But this equipment is indestructible, and it gives equipped creature plus five plus five first strike trample indestructible haste. And when it deals combat damage to a creature, you exile that creature. So this is calling back to the uh, three card cycle of Cauldra equipment that did all of this. Um, over three equipment, and then you could pay a certain amount of mana and put like a four four av cauldra avatar one mana and pay and put a four four cauldra avatar token into play with all of them equipped. Yeah. So, so the sort of cauldra. All right, sorry, do you want to? Don't go ahead, please. I don't have memorized, so please. So what this is is a callback to the cards that were they were important in the Mirrodin original Mirrodin story, and they were um, the pre-release cards for each of the original Mirrodin block sets. And they were the set symbols for original Mirrodin block. So you had Sword of Cauldra, which gave plus five, plus five. And whenever this creature deals combat damage to, a, whenever creatures dealt combat damage by the creature, you exile that creature. With it died, if it dies from the combat damage, it doesn't get exiled, which is unintuitive. Oh, yeah, because because it dies from state based actions before the triggered ability. Results. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Right. So that was sort of called, right? And I, I think it costs six and equips for five. Damn. Let's look it up. Cost four. Look it up. Cost four. Yeah. So. Yeah. Sword uh, costs four and equips for four. Excuse me. And then um, Helm of Caldra was the Dark Steel set symbol, and in Dark Steel, and it costs four. And equips for four, and it makes the equipped creature indestructible, and it makes Sword of Cauldra, Shield of Cauldra, and when it was printed, the yet unprinted Helm of Cauldra indestructible. And then lastly, Helm of Cauldra costs three, equips for two, and 
it gives the equipped creature first strike trample and haste, and then you can pay one. And then if you control equipment named Helm of Caldra, Sword of Caldra, and Shield of Caldra, you make a four, four colorless legendary avatar named Caldra and you attach equipment to it. So like, yeah, this, so I love those cards, but generally like I don't have room to put them all in a commander deck. I love equipment. I love Stoneforge Mystic. Apparently people, at least on Reddit, who knows what's going to be like. Stoneforge Mystic is legal, so you can go tutor this out turn two, put it into play turn three uh, with Stoneforge Mystic and bash with a 5-5 five, five with all of these rules. Um, people are yeah. saying because it doesn't have bash lifelink. Probably... Yeah, because of lifelink. But this is going into multiple commander decks. I love equipment. I love the callbacks, so I'm fucking thrilled. And the Phyrexians got Cauldra. They got her. So, yeah. Run it up to Sword of Hearth and Home because I love the Sword of cycle, and I have a deck where I'm going to have all 10 once they're all printed in it. And uh, I like overrate equipment that uh, do bullshit things. And the green-white one is a normal sword, so cost 3, equip for 2, plus 2, plus 2, pro green, pro white. And on a combat damage trigger to a player, you exile a creature you own, search your library for a basic land card, and put both those onto the battlefield under your control. Land it comes into play, untap, and you can use this to regain control of a creature somebody took from you. Big fan of this card. It's a little bit of a garden path uh, sentence kind of ability in that, like, it's not really clear. Um, like, reading it is a little bit of a, and then put them both. What both? And then you, like, read back at the beginning of the ability, and it's like, oh, that's, like, it's a very, it's a very clean design, I think. Also, right, nine out of ten, right? Uh, no. Black and green, red. Oh, right. Yeah. So we got two left, okay. and it's gonna be another probably five years before we have them both because they aren't putting them out fast, which is fine. I'm okay that they didn't jam all three in here. It's kind of fun to wait for them, and they're expensive as hell. So like, it's if they were all in here, it'd be a bunch of thirty dollar cards I need to get. All right, JC, you're on deck for favorite card. Lily, favorite card. Okay, uh, I have two answers here because I'm a cheater. Oh, how dare you. So, my favorite card is Hard Evidence. <laughs> and it is a one blue sorcery. Uh, create a zero three blue crab creature token. Investigate. So you get a crab and a clue for one blue mana. And the flavor text is, the investigator felt a pinch on his ankle. When he looked down, something glittered in the sand. Like, literally, it's just this, like, little story of this investigator who's on the beach, and a crab, like, snips his ankle, and he looks down, and he sees a clue. Like, that's the story on this card, and it is so great. So that's the favorite card? That's my favorite card in the set. The card I am most excited to build around, and the card that has filled a desire that I have had for a long time is... is Grist the Hungering Tide. Okay, glad I, I wasn't totally wrong then. That was my guess yeah. for you. Yeah, that's that's the one I'm most excited to make because I have been like jonesing for an insect tribal kind of like commander card for a long time. I love insects. I love bugs in general. I like spiders too, but like specifically like a legendary creature that cares about insects is fun. And it's like it's not a legendary creature when it's in play. It's like the weirdest thing ever. Like it's yeah. technically not a characteristic defining ability. I don't think we have the ruling yet that makes it work, but when it got previewed, it did not technically work as a commander because um, because the first ability. So, okay, what Grist is, is a planeswalker for one green, one black and one, it starts with three loyalty. Um, as long as Grist, the Hungering Tide, isn't on the battlefield, it's a 1-1 one, one insect creature in addition to its other types. That and makes then so many things weird. You... It does. It's great, though. So you can play it from your graveyard as if it were a creature with, like, Kirador, for example. You can remove Soul, or what's the new one? The not old magic player one, the... Counter target creature spell. You can counter it like it's a creature it's spell when it's on the stack. You can make them discard it like it's a creature card. It like it dodges um, duress like it's a creature. Um, you can put it out with collective company. It. 
Yeah, because when it's in your library, it's a creature. But then as soon as it hits the battlefield, it stops being a creature. So technically, um, like with the way that it, it, it works, and they, they added a rule to characteristic defining abilities, I think, to accommodate this. Um, he can be your commander. Or they can be your commander. Because it's technically, when it's not on the battlefield, it's a creature. So it's a legendary creature. Um, Dumb as hell. I'm so But it's happy. also the cleanest way to make that work. Like, it would be such a mess to make it work the other way. Because you would need loyalty and the power of toughness. In the yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, I've, I, I'm thrilled this card exists. It's dumb as hell. Like, so, in the best sorry, way. Getting, uh, getting away from the actual other abilities, right? So, um, plus one. Create a 1-1 one, one black and green insect creature token, then mill a card. If an insect card was milled this way, put a loyalty counter on Grist and repeat this process. So you keep going until you hit a non-insect and you get that many insects and loyalty counters, which isn't a lot. There aren't a ton of like playable bugs in like Commander, let's say, for example, because that's where I'm excited for them. Um, then minus two, you may sacrifice a creature. When you do, destroy target creature or planeswalker. That's pretty cool. Fine. On a three-minute walk, it's appropriate. Then minus five. Each opponent loses life equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard. That's pretty good. Yeah. Especially that you can like chain, like with the plus one. Like you could, like if you're rolling really hot, you could like do that every other turn. Yeah. No. It, so this card just seems really well designed. It's seems breakable as hell because of the ways to get it out there. But the none of the abilities seem like ridiculous or overrate or anything. Right. So like, I right. see this. If it was balanced around being like a five mana planeswalker, I think having it be easy to reanimate would be a problem. But yeah, like it's, it's also a swarm of bugs. Yeah, and it's there's a there's a sentient planeswalker bug in there yeah. who can planeswalk around and then just make another weird body out of other bugs because it's like yeah. a swarm. They show up and they're just like, all right, gonna gather some bugs. It's upsetting. It's weird. It might be way too good. It might be terrible. This is the kind of card I come to Modern Horizons for. Like, this is the quintessential. Like, I look at this, and then I read, like, 12 comments on Reddit and go, oh, yeah, you can Green Sun Zenith this out. Oh, yeah, you can Collected Company this out. Oh, yeah, um, you can put this down with, um, uh, what's that artifact? The, 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 uh, the You can Aether Vial this Planeswalker in. This is dumb as hell, and I love it. And yeah, you can build a bug tribal deck, or you could just run it as a value Jund card, so, or you... It's so It weird. is worth, like, it is worth bringing up here that most of the upsides to being a creature involve it being a creature when it's not on the battlefield, and most of the downsides to being a creature involve it being on the battlefield. Yeah. No, it's just absurd. So, yeah, good. I'm, I, I was hoping you'd pick that one, because, yeah. All right, JC, favorite card or cards because me and Lily both cheated. Oh, so I have a couple. Um, how dare you? How dare I, indeed. All right, let me pull one up here real quick. Sorry, running the boards is hard sometimes. Uh, so Thrasta, uh, Tempest Roar. I actually really like that dino. Um, I, I like dinosaurs. Uh, maybe childhood fascination kind of thing. I like that it's a really powerful dinosaur um so it's fun so uh thrasta is 10 <laughs> uh 12 so it's 10 green green it's a 7 7 cost three less to cast for each spell you cast this turn it's got trample haste trample over planeswalkers which i think is a neat thing it does exactly, exactly what it sounds, sounds like it does exactly what it sounds like it's really descriptive uh thrasta tempest roar has hexproof as long as they aren't entered the battlefield this turn so that's fun. Um, I also like uh, Chatterfang a whole bunch. I think Chatterfang's really cool, and I want to make a Squirrel Tribal deck. Um, and I also, I just want to call out Garth One-Eye. I actually really love Garth One-Eye. Um, if you guys haven't got it through listening to me to during this entire run of this podcast, <laughs> I have a major, like, love of, like, a major nostalgia for, like, old school kind of magic. And, like, the old cards and like the old artists and everything like that and garth specifically calling out disenchant brain geyser terror shivan dragon regrowth and black lotus like as like just this hobo wizard old guy who used to play magic like back in the day like 
and busts out his sheev and dragon. It's it's stupid, it's fan servicey, and I really like yeah, that. He was a main character from the first book, and in that first book the, the guy the, 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 the person who wrote it was like basically describing all the fights was basically like, and then they summoned these creatures and then the other wizard summoned those creatures and they did this. It was very much like trying to ape a game of magic. So it's so appropriate for like, yeah, he's just got an alpha deck and is a wizard. Um, also really quick shout out to, I love all these storm cards that don't need to be, Oh, you didn't get your storm count. Perfect. So you lose. So like, Oh, here's value for your storm. So like, Oh, the you lose. Hmm. The ooze. Well, I was against Thrasta, and I was, I'm probably going to build Thrasta in Commander because I love, I like the idea, I like Storm, and I kind of want to do a Storm Commander deck that isn't just a one turn combo kill. So like, and it has to be Thrasta because the ooze is way too easy to combo kill with is in it? the command. Um, food chain because all oh. the copy yeah yeah. Oh, yeah it's it's like the combo it's like the baddest one card and i want to run food chain in a deck with thrasta so like everything I, combos with food chain. everything combos with food chain but like the point of this like it's a mono green deck so like my hope is to not have it be too ridiculous like i'm gonna run all i'm gonna run the life game storm oh. card i'm gonna run the squirrel storm card i'm going to run the ooze storm card but like so the, thrasta still gets you infinite storm with food chain I think you're right. Well, the, well, yes. But the problem, but the nice thing is, there isn't a one shot storm kill in green. Even if I get infinite spells cast. That's true. You just make a fuck ton of squirrels, and then you need to untap with it. Yeah, and like, and maybe okay. it, uh, food chain might get cut from the deck because yeah, it, it might quickly become apparent that playing my commander infinite times is too good. Like, even if food chain. Didn't make one more mana food chain with because because Thrasta reduces by three for each. Yeah, spell. so, so it, it's still so you you're up two every time you. Yeah, so it's still infinite creature mana, but it's only infinite creature. That's the thing. It's like, can I build a really weird storm combo deck that isn't always a one turn kill? So that's the that's the goal. Okay, yeah. okay. I I want to talk about guys will and I want to talk about what Ooh. Morrow said. Honor Mentioned for favorite cards are the cycle of uh, the 10-card cycle of two-color artifact lands. That are indestructible. Are you, are you talking about the bridges? Yeah. I love hey. the bridges. The power Depot is pretty good, I think. I love the fact that they were like, these are great, but people keep blowing them up because there's so much artifact destruction in this set. And so they're like, well, we just made them indestructible. They're like, done. I, I just like Dark Steel Forge is fine. Yeah. I just yeah. like the concept the of land... indestructible bridges. That's so cool. like yeah, not forge. Sorry, citadel. Yeah, yeah. No, I it, the 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 flavor is great. It's mirrored in pre getting Phyrexia, so like it's a fun little flavor thing. They're great for commander. Most people, a lot of people, are playing tap lands. Uh, artifact lands are dumb and doing dumb things with them, and they come into play tap, so you can't do too dumb of things with them in modern or legacy. So like, no, it's the perfect. Artifact land, I'd say. So, no, quite happy with that. Can but I, we need to talk about guys, Will. Okay, okay one, what? one second. I just want to call out, uh, like, as a runner up, uh, Arcus Acolyte. I don't know why I like this card. I like Outlast. It's silly. It's it's a green white creature that's got Reach and Lifelink, and it's got Outlast that costs green or white. And each other creature you control without a 1 1 counter on it has Outlast. And it's and, a. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Without? Yeah, Without. so you uh, it, it lets oh, everything shit. out and has once. I was reading it wrong. I thought it was with, and I'm like, okay, I mean, I guess. I, my only sadness, and it's probably like this might be modern playable. Again, I don't know. I'm a little sad this wasn't legendary because that at first I thought it was because it was It'd in a different language. It'd be a good language. legendary, wouldn't it? It really would be. And now there's, like, if you're playing Popper Commander where, like, any uncommon creature can be your commander, I think it's very fun. So it's a cool card. Um, Okay, we're talking about Guy's Will. Guy's Will, got it. Gaia's will is uh, Yawgmoth's will, but it has no mana cost, and it's, it has suspend four for one green. So until the end of turn, you may play land cards and cast spells from your graveyard, and if a card would be put into your graveyard from anywhere this turn, exile that card. So it's Yawgmoth's will, but it's green. Now, here's the interesting story. Per Morrow, the set that Yawgmoth's will came out in, which was a set, Morrow was on, and he submitted the card as green, and another designer submitted it as black. 
and it went into the set as black. And Maro said it should have never been black. It should have been green initially and that it's completely appropriate for green. Green can regrowth. Green can do all of this stuff out of the yard. So, yeah, we got green Yagmoth's will. Discuss. Okay, so you have an ethical obligation to murder the person who suspends it when they suspend it. No. There is no setup for this four turns ahead that does not end up profane. It's going to go on my mono green storm combo deck. Okay, so also, I don't, like, that green is able to regrow instance and sorceries. I don't think, like, like I don't think it should be able to. Yeah, like, but I mean... Permanent card. Just make, like, permanent, permanent card. card. I, I'm so... Like, like the, fact the fact that we, that we have, have regrowth from alpha, alpha, like, isn't, like, technically it's a precedent, but, like, modern card design, like, green shouldn't be able to get anything back from the graveyard. Just permanent cards. Yeah, I mean, I can kind of see. I, I know that the, it's fun to hate on green right now, but green used to be the not that good color when I was playing in a lot of formats. That's fair. I'll take it. It's suspend for. Are you doing fair things with this card? Probably not. Is anyone doing fair things with Yagmoth's will? No. Yagmoth's will is banning commander. Yes, but. The creature that lets you do it and the red one that's just instant sorcery with flashback aren't, and no one does anything fair with those. Um, Passive Flames is only instant and sorcery. Yagmoth's Will might be legal, actually. Huh? So, uh, I, I don't have a flavor problem at all with this card, I guess. Like, I know graveyard stuff, like, and green is a. Oh, shit. It's, it's legal. Yagmoth's Bargain is not. Yeah. Thing, but, yeah, no, I just, I don't have a problem with like the whole like kind of terra eternal kind of thing going on like you know like lands can't no you know no i, I, I think, think uh, for the record i don't think black should be able to regrow into so the sorceries either i think an argument could be made that in modern card design green doesn't necessarily need to regrow instance and sorceries they've decided that it can and like if green is the best at any card like okay i guess uh I feel of all the colors, it's the most appropriate to get anything back, because, like, okay. red shouldn't, black, I, I, I think black should get creatures, white should get artifacts, creatures, enchantments, blue should get instants and sorceries. If green can get a little bit of everything, I think it's probably okay. Would I the game... red should also get instants and sorceries. Yeah, red should get instants and sorceries, and I also like red as just temporary stuff, so, like, I love, like, I come back and then I exile me, so, like, unearth's really fun in red, but Anyway, we can, I feel like we, 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 we need to stop doing this if we're going to do any reminiscing. So, yeah, yeah. Any final thoughts? The set, for mine, it's the set looks sweet as hell. So it looks very sweet. Um, I, I really like the amount of, like, new keywords. Like, uh, we were talking in one of our group chats <laughs> earlier about Banner Hide uh, Krushok, who's got Trample, Reinforce, and Scavenge all on one card. I like those together. together. And it's like it's like nice three keywords on one card that are like not common keywords. That's and plus like what a cool creature. So like uh, this is just a keyword heavy, very technical set. Got a lot of artifacts and like squirrel love. Um, I'm I'm about it. I'm enjoying it. Yeah, quite thrilled. Lily, final thoughts. Uh, final thoughts. I can't believe they printed a uh, creature with affinity for artifacts that doesn't have any colored mana in its mana cost. Like they just printed like a uh, a um, mer, um There's like the four 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 seven affinity for artifacts that also you can just artifact land cycling it. Yeah, it's just a four four, but like also it could just be a free four four. Well, um, Mer, uh, Mer Enforcer is just a 4-4 four, four for 7 Infinity for Artifacts from um, Darksteel. Yeah. No, I, it's... I think it's not playing the standard version of Affinity. My Probably. Opinion. Yeah, no, they there's some stuff that I'm real... I'm Last time they printed Modern Horizons, they fucked Modern up real bad, so let's see what happens. Um, is weird. Also, I, so, okay. I'm just going to say the words Ornithopter of Paradise... <laughs> I love that card. And then I'm going to say, we'll be right back. Hi, and welcome to the ads. This week we are brought to you by Cards Custom Builds. Are you into cosplay? Are you looking to get into cosplay? 
In the future, do you want to show up as your, at your favorite event dressed up as your favorite character? Well, then Card Custom Builds is here to help. Card Custom Builds creates everything from props and trinkets and weaponries all the way up to full costumes. I've seen some of the costumes that they made. They are all fantastic. They're really good stuff. If you would like to get some awesome things for your cosplay or just cool stuff to have around if you want to throw a halloween party at the end of the year and be like the talk of your halloween party please go check out cards custom builds over at facebook and tell them about tcg university say that we sent you and you'll get five percent off your entire order please do this they do a bunch of things over there um clay is uh making a lot of really cool stuff he makes coasters too if you want to go get coasters i think he's selling them on etsy and on a uh, on facebook so Please, if you want to get some cool stuff uh, for your cosplay or for anything, go check out Cards Custom Builds and tell them that we sent you. This week, we are also brought to you by Dex Protections. Dex Protections is in a never-ending pursuit to create the highest quality storage and protection accessories. The designs and innovation come from diehard gamers and collectors just like you, so that they so you know that what they make is stuff that you will want to buy because they are also making stuff that they would want to buy. Uh, they are on a never-ending pursuit to create the best product, and that is why they are the leader in the industry in creating accessories for your deck products. <laughs> Please, if you would like to go uh, get some new stuff for when we're finally able to go out into public and go to tournaments and stuff, go to Deck Protections, and um, there will be a link down in the description down below for that. Please go check them out. We are also brought to you this week by Red Ride Games. They are a Canada-based online seller of things like Universes, MTG, and Pokemon. They're friends of the show. We like them a whole lot. Please, 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 please go to redridegames.ca and check out all their singles there. And when you check out, use creator code TCGU to help support the show and help support them. It would be greatly appreciated. We like them a whole lot, and we would love it if you would use them to buy some singles for any upcoming tournaments that you might have towards the end of the year. Lastly, we are brought to you by Nuclear Inc. Custom Tattoo and Skate Shop. At Nuclear Inc., you will find a very inclusive environment with artists that share interests in nerd culture and fandoms alike. Nuclear Inc. prides themselves on Omaha's premier all-custom tattoo shop. If you are in the area and looking to get a custom tattoo, please check out Nuclear Inc. Uh, Nuclear Inc. here in Omaha. Link in the description down below. They're cool guys. We like them a whole lot. Um, yeah, they're really awesome. Please, if you're in the Omai area and you want to get a tattoo, please go check them out. Thank you. And we'll get back to the show. Well, alrighty. So, we are... This is going to be a little loosey. It's going to be looser than when than normal. So, yeah, it's going to be real, real off book. Uh, we're just going to... Uh, the thought for this was we're just going to reminisce about the show, about favorite magic stories, just about magic stuff. We're just going to ramble a little bit. And, uh, yeah, so, um, if y'all have a favorite magic story, uh, anything related to the podcast, anything just, uh, one time you did a cool thing, a nice friend moment, I've got one queued up if y'all want a moment to think, or if y'all have something, go ahead. Oh, I got a number. Okay, Lily, open us up. Just what's a magic story you like? Oh, um, personal triumph is uh, from a Strixhaven draft where I killed somebody with Mystic's Mastery with the Tendrils of Agony and a bunch of cantrips in the yard, overloading it and then casting the whole graveyard and then tendrilsing them for like like 26. In limited, yeah. That's pretty good. It's so cool. It was so good. I opened them and I looked at them and I'm like, hmm. Oh. And then, like, Mystic Mastery won, like, half of my games anyway, so. So, for me, this was a, a newbie mono green deck. My friend had helped me cobble together a mono green deck based on a few cards I had laying around and the 7th edition starter set with the Foil Thorn Elemental. And so that was, like, my, my guy. And then... Your Roxas. My Roxas. Well, th that was even pretty... Like, early on in the deck's life... Um, I really needed more. I, I I needed more finishers, and so I think I'd opened a Shockland or something, and so I went over to another friend's house who was playing competitive Magic at the time, and I remember getting like twenty five dollars worth of like just dollar rares, and like it wasn't even. I don't even know that. Eventually, that did happen. I traded a shot for a ton of dollar rares, 
but he just threw three thorn elementals at me for free. And I, my mind couldn't comprehend how someone could just give me the greatest creature ever. It deals its damage even if you block it. No matter what, they're taking seven. It's, it's just so good. So, yeah, that was kind of mind-boggling for me. Uh, JC, you got something? Uh, you guys are going to have to help me remember an old card. Uh, there was an old blue card uh, that had something to do with chains where you take control of everyone else's creatures and stuff like that. Ugh. Vidalkin Shackles, the artifact that you could tap and take control of a creature with power less than or equal to the number of islands that you controlled? No, there's a, there's a blue card. Well, anyway, uh, I'll, I'll remember it and then I'll be, you know, mad about it later. Um, there's a card that, essentially, old school card that let me take control of everyone's creatures uh, for a turn. Um, and uh, I started playing magic as, like, real kind of kitchen table magic with my neighbors who all played magic. Like, the dad played magic and... the my friend, uh, the, the son uh, there played magic, and the mom played magic, and they all played magic, so we all played commander together, and, uh, so, like, getting old school, like, kitchen table magic together, and, uh, being kind of like someone that they didn't pay attention to the whole time, and then getting a stupid spell off, um, feels real good, and it, you know, like, brings, brings me back to the, the beginning of magic. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right, Lily, go ahead. Uh, I I don't know. Like, it stuck with me for a while that back in, like, high school when we were playing, when we had the, like, when you had your, like, dumb blue-green, like, uh, Nakano Warpride deck. Oh, I was going to bring that one. That was going to be what? Yeah, I was going to bring that one up. And then I, um, and then, like, one of my first combo decks, one of my, like, first ones that was, like, like okay, I'm going to be a little serious, I managed to get a couple of Earthcrafts, and I had, I just had, a, like, a casual kitchen table deck that was, like, Beacon of Creation, Skull Clamp, Earthcraft, and I was just like, I'm going to go Critical Mass. And my deck was, you took the Coddle War Pride, uh, and then you side of shaped it after the trigger went on the stack into a Vigian right. Hydropon. And if you had a doubling season in play, you would get double attacking Vigian Hydropons that were all 10 tens. And then every graph you did would add two counters to one of the Hydropons. Yeah. Yeah. Um, double, yeah. But like, I, in this situation, I don't even think that the, the side of shape was, was a concern because, like, ultimately, I needed to get. I needed to generate enough tokens that I had like more than three times as many untapped ones than tapped ones, because no matter how many creatures I made, I still needed, or whatever life total I got to, I still was going to take three times my number of tapped creatures and damage from the Nakata War Pride just on its own. Yeah. So I was like sitting there and I'm like, okay. And I just figured out the math. And it was just like one of those early moments where it's like, Damn, I love this game. Yeah, we put a sticky note tag taking track of how many insects and cats died during that fight. It was a lot. I like, I like the bugs so much. much. I, that was... I, uh, I put Beacon of Creation in every commander deck that it made sense to put it in. Yeah. And my Essex uh, deck that I just made, the, the Fractal, has one in it. Oh, that that's... By the by, the, really? car the card was named Reigns of Power. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Nice. No, yeah, that, okay, I, yeah, that's, I know that card. Vidalkin Shackles is much better, but yeah. we aren't talking about good magic, we're talking about kitchen table magic. Um, another good one for me is the same friend who gave me the Thorn Elementals was playing, this was Ravica Time Spiral Standard, and so it was the Angel Fire deck. Yes. With, like, all of the removal and the Wraths of God and the life gain and from damnation. the yard. And damnation. And I remember I beat the deck at least once with my dumb mono green deck because I had a plated slag worm and the thing had hexproof. So I was just making like an 8-8 eight eight with hexproof and giving it plus six plus six and trample and the deck couldn't deal with it, the hexproof. And I was able to beat, get a couple wins off against that deck at least a, a few times. And I couldn't deal with the hexproof. So it had eight wraths in it. Yeah, no, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I mean, maybe, I think it was the Angel Fire deck I beat. It was certainly. Yeah. One of the competitive removal heavy decks, and I was able to pull it off with a hexproof eight eight for seven. So that was a good feeling, or the feeling of pulling, of opening a shock land and then getting to get like four more booster, handing it back to the store and getting four more booster packs. Oh man, coming away from the future sniper release with four Tarmogoyfs was a fun feeling. 
oh, oh, the Lorwyn pre-release with a foil Liliana and an Ajani when Planeswalkers were brand spanking new. That was a good feeling. Another one, this was Carney, first F&M. I was playing my mono white equipment deck with a uh, quest for the hidden relic and uh, the Stoneforge Mystics and Argentum armor. And I was playing one of the better players in Carney, and he was just a super cool guy. And all his sons played, and I hadn't played with him much. And it was maybe the first or second F and M. And he was this was he was running some kind of Jace the Mind Sculptor deck before it took over. And I beat him. And Jace was oppressive, but because he could like creatures enters the battlefield triggers really good. I put my Argentum armor on the guy that let me reattach Argentum armor for free. And there's a point where he goes, hey. Did you equip that to the Argentum armor to him on purpose, knowing that if I bounced him, you'd be able to re-equip it? I was like, yeah. And he was like, that was a really heads-up play. So just getting like a, did you do that on purpose? Not in a judgy way, but like in a, that was just like in a congratulation play from like the best guy there was a really nice, I, I mean, I, it happened, what was that? It would have been 2010? So yeah, I remember it a decade later. So Yeah. Was that uh, before or after the deck that had five Arbor Elves? That was before. And then I went into Elves and accidentally like brought an illegal deck like five five weeks in a row. And not even on the... Clearly not on purpose, because like Arbor Elf was real good, but like I would have picked a different Elf if I was cheating. That Elf deck was dumb. That Elf deck was really dumb. Also at F&M, bringing a out-of-the-blue mono-blue illusions deck when there was that whole cycle of, like, the bear and the illusion clone and the illusion master. And then I just put my curve topper as Frost Titan, and I think I won that FNM against a really brutal, like, Jund deck. And, like, they were just, like... And, like, it was, like... They were testing it. It was the same guy who gave me the compliment, and he had been, like, testing... Like, he had worked with another player who was really good there on that deck, and I just brought a complete out-of-the-blue... No one's ready for mono blue aggro with a six drop six right. six at the top of the curve to win, but I won, and that felt real good too. It's because all of the spells that they were running killed your creatures anyway. And hey. then if you and if you cloned the illusion lord, then all of your creatures just had shroud. Yeah, that was a good one. All right, I said a lot. Somebody else throw a story out there. So, uh, Friday, in uh, Friday Night Magics, I can't remember exactly which set it was. It was uh, somewhere around Ixalan, something like that. I was running like a Red Deck Wins kind of deck, um, as people are wont to play um, at times. And uh, so I, I like to occasionally bring these like really aggressive, like fire off all the like red spells like as quickly as you can and just target, go straight for the face kind of decks occasionally and uh one time uh, i can't remember his name but some guy uh, like called me out and he was testing a deck and he wanted to specifically play against a red deck wins because apparently um they they were like talking that like it's a good it's good to test your deck against just a very aggressive mono red deck um just in case like that's an initial stepping stone for like uh your deck going very far you know, oh. so like uh, that, and that was just cool. Um, I actually like, I like a lot of pre-releases as well. Um, I just wanted to call that out because like I'm a night owl, and like midnight releases and people playing with cards like around midnight was just totally my jam. And uh, oh. I don't know that we'll have much of that anymore, but uh, too old for that shit. Yeah. Um. Oh man. Lily, what do you got? Yeah. Um. Our scars playing the dumb red green in fact that like like the first time i killed someone with turn one glistener elf turn to assault strobe groundswell was so good <laughs> i was like on the play and i'm just like all right glistener elf and then i'm like assault strobe and they're like okay and then when i attack groundswell game <laughs> it felt so good it was such a bad deck oh my like I had Flame Slash, too, because I didn't care that it couldn't go Dome, because I was in fact. Yeah, so you got better removal. I was the standard right before that. It's when I found out I liked playing red. It's when I shif shifted from a green mage to a red mage, where like we were, it was just kind of a weird Kiln Fiend. It was like a Kiln Fiend, Cunning Spark Mage, Basilisk Scholar deck that was running Koth and Six Mana Chandra. Nice. And I pulled off. I, and that was, so I was living in Carney, but I was in Omaha, so I won Krypton's F&M with yeah. that deck. 
Um, and there was a way bigger F and M, and the deck was not tier one, but it was just no one was ready for it, and I got lucky. But I remember I was more excited for Sh Chandra Blaze than any other card in the deck, even though she was probably the worst card in the deck. So there was a point, and I did not. Have, I had, this is the first time I ever played with Koth. And Koth was like the best red planeswalker ever. And the whole point of Koth was to just get Koth's ultimate off. And Koth's ultimate red, your mountains have tapped you one damage any target. So, like, you do that and then you just go, okay, on tap five you. Okay, you would lose. Um, but I had Koth ultimate mana, but I used Koth's other, the Koth's minus to make enough red mana to play Chandra ablaze. And a player, a competitive player there, like, straight up called me an idiot for doing that. Like, Mid game, which you probably should have been talking about. You should certainly shouldn't. He, he should have been nicer at that moment, and he shouldn't have talked mid game. I still was won it anyway. Ridiculous? Yes, it was absolutely who you think it was. <laughs> who I'm not naming here, um, but yes, it absolutely was him, and it absolutely was a terrible play. I won anyway, and I won that F and M anyway, or at least did well enough. I think I won. I remember winning, uh, unless the memory's been corrupted by time. But. Was, uh... Oh man, you like have a habit of showing up at Krypton with like weird, like standard decks. Like there was, yeah. you, you did one with like like Soren and the dumb like deal ten damage. It was the red. It was the oh right? uh, yeah. It was Soren's vengeance and the form and the Chandra who let you double a card. So like if I man, I pulled it off once or twice. I I didn't win that F and M, but I, I I got like I went like three. I went X and one, and I also got some to concede. Um by taking our turn with Soren Markov and saying, let me see your sideboard. What was the illusion? He was playing the illusions deck, so, like, it was the illusions decks and bounce spell, so I was about to, like, dismantle his whole deck with his hand, so it wasn't like oh, I wasn't about uh, to win. Like, Soren Markov's plus just kills the illusions. Yeah, so... Just, I don't know, it's a six-mana planeswire. I feel like he's allowed to kill a creature in a plus, but... Yeah, so, like, that was... And then there was also the time where I was running... Yeah, I didn't bring a lot of weird brews. I wasn't a weird brews. Because there was that fire-breathing Phyrexian mana creature. And so there was a point where like, I'm sitting there doing yeah. math. And my, I'm doing like... Oh, still dragon. Yes. No, 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 no the dragon. No, oh, there's the also little one. The little okay. one. And like just giving it double strike or something. So, like, so there was a point where I was like doing math and my opponent was 18. And he's like, what are you doing? I'm not anywhere close to dead. And I just like flash the double strike card in my head. He's like, oh. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, okay, I go down to two and kill you. Yeah, that's called parody. Oh, man. Oh, gosh. And, oh, according, man. And, and this is... Eric, I think, summed up younger me better and still maybe possibly me. Eric once pointed out that my enthusiasm often came off as arrogance. So, like, yeah. I wasn't like, I'm the best or y'all suck. But I was always just so excited. And I was all my goal was always be a good sport. So I was never gloaty. But I was always excited and you could tell I was excited. But apparently for a lot of people it came off as, oh, he's really arrogant. No, I'm just real happy to be here playing Magic the Gathering. Oh my gosh. Um I do like I like that stint where we were all playing um um French Commander. Yeah. That would be where we had pro we had like we would do non sanctioned proxy tournaments, so like you right. could play like the best dual commander deck and like here's my fetch lands, here's my alpha duels. <laughs> yeah. I need the most like miserable version of Carador that has ever existed. <laughs> well that was the first tournament we played with that. I was running my Captain Sisse deck, and that's when um Fast Bond was legal and Imperial Recruiter was legal. Yeah. And so like turn three, it's like Survival of the F Fast Bond, Survival of the Fittest, um, get Iona into my yard, play Imperial Recruiter, Sack Imperial Recruiter, reanimate Iona, name the one color your deck is, pass. Like, that was the consistent, like, right. Fast Bond could be, like, turn two, that's happening. Because Fast Bond I, um, is bullshit. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, um, like, one of my most memorable for friend, for Dual Commander was there was like one game where I was playing someone who's a maelstrom wanderer and they just like got to a place where I was like peacekeeper. I just played peacekeeper out and I kept like playing him from my graveyard after I attacked every turn and I couldn't get attacked back. And it was like, yeah, cascades are nice, but like you can't attack me. So how are you going to win? Oh, some dumb shit. Any, any, any final th stories, JC? 
uh, playing uh, Magic the Gathering by Microprose on a 24-hour live stream for charity. That was, uh, it was the first time I've ever played uh, a game on someone else's stream. I got to speedrun the first game I've ever tried to speedrun. Um, and uh, I got to like experience a lot of weird old nostalgia for Magic through that stupid game. Um, so... Yeah, that's a that's that's a pretty good memory. I was that what was actually really cool was the response to it. Um, a lot of people watching had never seen this old weird game. They like they didn't have they haven't seen many speedruns. So like I get that. I got the impression people enjoyed it. Oh, I, I was on that stream. I don't normally stay up till two a.m. I was eating a pizza lunchable at two in the morning, watching you stream a game from the early nineties. It was a strange evening. It was a lot of fun. That was a great. That was a great live stream. So, JC, when are you going to reclaim your title? Oh, I know, right? Like, uh, so a bunch Tony of people... Yeah, no, a bunch of people got into that game. A, there like, a, like, there's, like, an active forum now, like, of people talking yeah, about yeah. different yeah. things. There was a there was a category yeah. split. That's yeah, it's we, like a real grown up speed Because <laughs> that's no. when you can, like, now you can run it with a set seed. Yeah. Or, <laughs> so, okay. Or, okay, it's, like, you can... Ex you can like check the seed as long as you don't play on the saved file. Okay. Yeah, so you could like make a file, you can check where the castles are and everything, and then you just don't save it. And as long as when you're starting your timer that the, the file you're playing has no progress, you're fine. Okay. Which I think, like, I I don't know that there should have been a category split. Well, there was there was also a category split with us playing on the same save file. And splitting it somehow or something like that. No, like, I, I, I'm not real no, familiar like, with that. I'm not real familiar. Anyway, anyway, we should uh, we should go okay. into the post show. <laughs> All right, Lily. Final. Any final thing oh, you yeah. want to say? Are you good? Oh, sorry. Uh, JC, there it's go. still four on any percent random seed. Any any final any final stories or anything, Lily? Otherwise, I can wrap us up. God, um, I like Brett counting to 15. That was a tournament where, That's yeah, where, yeah, I was excited. Brett tournament with a lot on the line. I am yet 13 mana, and I had it like everyone watching because we'd been run late and it was like semi finals. And I thought I had Emrakul mana, and I didn't, and it was embarrassing. But I think I ended up having Kozlek mana, and I won anyway, right? Because French commanders, dumb. Yeah, that's where that's where I got my second commander's arsenal. So, or no, maybe we split that one. I don't remember. That was for a commander's arsenal, and I think I won that tournament, or we split. What was the one where you took the Bayou? That was a later French tournament, and that was where I got second oh. because uh, the winner got to take the Wasteland because Wasteland hadn't been reprinted, and, and Wasteland was worth way more than the Bio, and now Wasteland's like forty bucks, and Bio's like four hundred. So, yeah, that worked out well. But, I am going to be a little corny. One of my favorite magic memories is getting to do this show for the past year and with the both of you, um, with our prior uh, host, Dave. This was fun. And, and Tam, or our, our, our former producer, Tam, this has been a blast, uh, particularly during COVID. This was a nice thing to help keep me sane. I hope it helped our audience some. Um, this has been an absolute pleasure and delight. I don't know when or where or how we'll be back. Uh, I expect at some point some kind of thing to come. I don't know what that is. So for now, we're going to say goodbye. We will have a bit of a post show after this one just because we got to have a post show. But I want to have our big firm goodbye here and now. So thank you all. Anyone who's watched any or all of our episodes, any support, all the support you've given us, any likes or shares, it's been appreciated. It's been super fun to do this. At one point, somebody I didn't know at a store said, hey, you're the podcast guy. That was a cool moment. This has been a pleasure and a privilege to get to do this. So I want to say thank you to everybody. Uh, we'll see you out there someplace. We'll be able to play Magic in person again soon if you can't already. Thank you for tuning in. And we're going to just give you one last one, one more, one last one. While you're out there, always make sure to remember who you are. Have a good one, everybody.